All right, what's going on, dudes? And welcome to Minecraft Snapshot 2013, week four. As usual, let's get started with some new stuff. We'll begin with Bone Meal, which has been nerfed severely. Not sure how strongly I agree with this decision, but judgment aside, let's go over the facts. So, we got some seeds in here, we've got some freshly tilled ground, and we'll demonstrate what has happened to bone meal. So we'll plant some wheat seeds, and now the way bone meal works is that rather than it just instantly growing the wheat to, to its full harvesting state, each click of the bone meal will take it to the next stage. You also get these little green particles, but that means that it actually takes seven bone meal. If I weren't in creative, you'd see the number going down. It takes seven bone meal to actually fully grow wheat so that you can harvest it. Now, this means it takes a lot of bone meal to get a very small amount of food. In fact, 21 to get one piece of bread. So it may need some balancing. In my humble opinion, I think that taking seven to grow one piece of wheat is a little bit much, maybe two, three at the most. Now, on the other hand, melon and pumpkin, as far as I can tell, are also seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then, of course, once again, you have to wait for them to finally grow out the fruit on whatever side they choose to grow it out on. Here, we'll just do pumpkin as well, just to demonstrate. So again, a lot more intensive to grow your crops. Now, on the other hand, I think it's quite strange that you can still grow a tree. It seems like it's been upped from one to two unless I've just been getting unlucky. But yeah, it's still two to grow a tree. And a tree, needless to say, has a lot more stuff. So maybe seven bone meal to actually grow a tree, because a tree is fairly significant, but maybe like two, three max to grow the crops. Probably two would be nice if there is going to be some sort of balancing act there. So just my opinion, but that's what's been changed with bone meal. That said, let's move on to our, I don't even know what you call these things. It's like a full smooth half slab block thingamadoohickey. Anyway, it was actually removed in the previous snapshot, but it's been added once again because lots of people like the texture. So the way you give it to yourself is slash give your name and 4318. And because this has also been, uh, it's, it's created, I don't know, it was recoded somehow, some fancy technical stuff that I don't quite understand, but because of it, you can also give yourself the full smooth sandstone block as well. So that's sort of a, a side effect, and I don't know, this thing's kind of nifty too. It just has the top sandstone face on all sides of the block. So these are two things to keep in mind. This one, I'm sure you're all familiar with, this one is new, so that's there for you. All right, on top of that stuff, mobs are now apparently quote unquote afraid of rails. <laughs> so you'll notice that none of these dudes are actually standing on the tracks in the center here. They're sort of skirting around the edges. And when they do go to cross the track, they're on it briefly and then they're, they're out again. So hopefully you might not have to worry about cows and pigs walking in front of you when you're riding your minecart tracks it seems as you can tell they uh they keep walking across but they don't actually stand and hover on the rail and they they seem to be kind of shying away from it so not too shabby i don't think they're afraid of it though it's not like they're <laughs> trying to run off in the other direction if i had this out in the open they wouldn't be like oh my god it's a rail not quite anywho that's uh that's new too Let's go over some changes to dispensers. So now dispensers can actually dispense bone meal, unfortunately, since again, bone meal has been nerfed. It takes a lot of dispensing to grow your wheat, but even so, again, we have some bone meal in here, and each time I flip this, we got our little green growing particles, and it'll keep growing our wheat right here. So voila, cool stuff. Also, you can now use dispensers to automatically equip armor to yourself. You have to be standing really, really close to the dispenser or it'll simply give it to you. So right here, we've got some armor. And if I flip the switch and now go into here, we've got our diamond leggings on, flip the switch again, and we've got our legs. Hold on, let me just back up to show you that you have to be in close proximity or else it uh, won't actually equip it. So just gave us the chest plate there. Again, go close up and it'll equip our helmet. So. That's new as well. You can also use flint and steel. So if we flip this right here, it'll actually use the flint and steel, wear down its durability slightly, and uh, it can 
shoot fire out. Oh my goodness. Another thing to note is that now you can actually place dispensers and droppers. They work the same way as well in uh, the upward facing position. So you can shoot an arrow straight up in the air, have it come back down on you, so on and so forth. And you can also, as I have it set up over here, have it facing downwards. This is to demonstrate the fact that now when you have TNT in a dispenser and you flip it, it'll drop some prime TNT and it will shortly blow up. Woo! Okay, <laughs> so that's actually pretty nifty as well. So now we've got another change to, well, an additional functionality of the comparator, I should say. Already a whole bunch of them, but you may as well add another. So we got some discs in here. Let me actually toss the stuff that I just accumulated in my inventory. We'll take some discs here. And the comparator will now actually output a signal based upon what number the disc is. So let's input the one I got here. And based upon counting how many redstones are active, so one, two, three, four, five, six, this is disc number six. Now, if we right click again, it ejects the disc, we can input another one. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you sort of get the idea. You can do it for each of them here. 13 should ignite almost all of them or just one, because it's not apparently 13. I know my stuff. <laughs> you get the idea, I think. All right, so let's throw this stuff back and we'll move on to what I feel is probably the coolest feature. So, in here we have this command to test for an amount of kills that I've gotten and we'll get to the purpose of this in a couple seconds, but this is part of a new sort of work in progress score system that is being added. So at the moment, as far as I'm aware, you can keep track of player kills, ki total kills, which I assume, I assume player kills means like PVP killing other people, uh, killing other players. Total kills includes mobs and uh, deaths as well. You can keep track of deaths. So at the moment, well, you, you don't really know how many kills and or deaths we have. You don't know if I've killed anything yet because you haven't seen me do it. I might have killed something setting up, but I can't actually remember. So why don't we figure that out? So in our command line, we can input this command here that I've, I've got in text file because I didn't want to have to remember it on the fly. So slash scoreboard objectives, and we're going to be keeping track of kills here. So add kills lowercase and total so the the kills is the variable total kill count is what we're at is a, the actual uh hard-coded variable that will keep track of your your kills and you end it with kills which i don't know exactly what that does but it's there so <laughs> lots of kills in there in the command anyway if we enter that we have this new objective called kills and then if we want to display it we can do slash scoreboard objectives set display side bar kills and now let's give ourselves a diamond sword and these poor pigs are about to feel my wrath so uh i'm just gonna kill one not a baby pig because i have sympathy and then you'll notice that over on the right side kills captain sparkles one so i've officially killed one and now over there, we're testing for whether or not I have seven. So if we go right now, it's going to test for if I have a minimum score kills min equals seven. So if I click this, nothing is going to happen because the command is false. So of course, the comparator is not going to register it and nothing is going to happen if we keep clicking it. On the other hand, let's bring our kill count up to eight. That's two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Oh god, we have to kill a baby pig to bring it to eight. Well, actually, it's a score kills minimum, so seven will work. So we can spare them for the moment. So here, click it, and voila. That command is true, because we have seven kills, minimum of seven, and the door will open. So of course, this is very useful for something like an adventure map, where, say, you have an objective to go find and kill ten zombies. You have to go find those zombies, and once you do, once you kill them, you'll know, because it'll show it in the uh, right-hand side of your screen, and you can finally open the door. 
So you actually have objectives that you need to complete in order to progress further in an adventure map. So it's, it's pretty sweet. Again, if I go swap this to say 10, done, and hit the button again, the command is now false because I only have seven kills. And that's that. So very cool feature. And I'm excited to, uh, to see its future uses and added scores that you can keep track of. So anyway, that's about it for this snapshot. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, a rating would be much appreciated. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.